We are back and better than ever. Welcome to Geek Gumbo episode 16. With me as always, we have Nick. Hello. And we brought him back from the dead. Here's Jason. Hey, what's up? Kalima. <laughs> Patrick, hum-dum we survive, miss you, buddy. Survive. Oh, goodness. We miss you, buddy. Enjoy Mexico before the wall goes up. All right. Wow. Wow. Ten more days. <laughs> I was going to say that, <laughs> but I just didn't have the heart to. I was like, There's you know a Donald what? Trump Chia pet. We should, should get one of those. Oh, my God. No. Oh, this is going left fast. Anyway. Don't you mean it's going right so, fast? Right. <laughs> that was pretty, I mean, that's pretty witty. That, that's pretty witty. <laughs> Good so, night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. You guys are oh, the cough. Shit. Oh, shit. They missed okay. us. Okay, so let me get right into business. <laughs> we got some flavors for you guys. We started out with Nick. Jesus. What you got for us, Nick? Well, 2017 has already taken its first potential victim as far as AAA titles go. Or potential AAA title because uh, it was made by uh, Platinum Games, people that brought Bayonetta and a few other games that I can't remember off the top of my head. Bayonetta 2, maybe. Metal Gear Rising, I think. Uh, Scalebound, which was a dragon-based action type of game. It was set to be released this year. It was going to be exclusive to Xbox One and PC. Uh, yeah, Microsoft shut that stuff down uh, yesterday. Although today uh-huh. they actually made an official statement saying that after careful deliberation, Microsoft Studios has come to the decision to end production for Scalebound. We're working hard to deliver an amazing lineup of games to our fans this year, including Halo Wars 2, Crackdown 3, State of Decay 2, and Sea of Thieves. Now, mind you, Halo Wars 2 and Crackdown 3 should have been out, like, last year, but, you know, it's whatever. Salty. Oh, well. Uh, I'm, not, so... I'm not so much salty. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> you know Microsoft, you, you're kind of dropping the ball here. I mean, Sony's kind of dropping the ball, too, but, you know. Well, I'll talk about them later. But Sony just can't. Yeah. No, no game publisher can just, or platform can just handle their balls for some reason. They're, they're massive. I mean, yeah. It's, it's a... They're about as massive as the Super Dragon Balls. Oh, Jesus. Here we go already. <laughs> oh, Sorry, goodness. I'm getting caught up on Dragon Ball Super. You're just bringing you know? that back from this morning, aren't you? Fuck yeah! I, I need to, I need to catch <laughs> up on it. I haven't watched anything. I've well, watched the first episode. It was subbed. And yeah, dude. I, have you seen Battle of Gods and Resurrection F? I have. Don't even bother. Just skip to like episode twenty-eight because literally the first twenty-seven episodes is retelling Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. So, basically, they watched the entire original series. And it was like, damn, that's a lot of filler. I bet we can top it. Yeah, that what and they started out. They started the series out with fucking filler. That's what the fuck I'm talking like, about. Like, why couldn't boy, they just boy, boy. start Dragon Ball Super after the events of Resurrection F? Just doesn't make any sense to me. Which a lot of people had problems with that movie. You know what? I did not. I might be one of the few, um, but I thought it was passable. I can see why was it people amazing, had it... issues with it because essentially it was like beating a dead horse with a stick, you know, bringing back a fan favorite villain and all that. But you know, well, I, I mean, it. where else are you going to go with it? Where else can you go with it? My only issue with it is that Frieza was like the first major villain, and he's not like, he's a bitch now. He should have. Well, even then, he should have been so. So outmatched, outclassed. So he trains for months, and he's right there with them. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's... I mean, don't forget, he was was already born with a very high power level, so, you know. I mean, I see why they... Also, what else can you do, right? Cell's dead. Boo's dead. I mean, where else can you really go? I mean, you know, we could talk about (laughs) GT, but not a lot of people like to talk about GT. Uh, Super Android 17, be damned. That, mo- that shit sucks. <laughs> all right, so what what do y'all think? I mean, I already talked to Josh earlier about this, but, you know, he didn't know what the hell this game was. I didn't know what the hell this game was until yesterday when I heard that it, uh, it had got canceled. 
So, as someone who owns nothing from Microsoft except for maybe a Windows program, correct. Well, you have a I don't PC, care. so you know. I <laughs> built it, didn't buy it. It's not their shit. Still, it's you're just running their OS. operating system. It's just their OS. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Uh, I'm not that affected. I don't have an Xbox. But the game looked, or excuse me, the trailers looked like it was going to be phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I watched actual gameplay. The game looked practically finished. Like, Man. It, it, it's, it's, it's just a shame. Like, it's along the lines with uh, Fable Legends getting canceled and uh, them closing down Lionhead Studios. And Carrie Fisher dying. I mean, that hurt my soul, guys. I mean, it, you know, it was last year, right? But that, it hurt my soul. It hurt my soul too, especially when I went to go see Rogue One. Right, and there awesome she is, movie. like twenty years ago, right, twenty years old and shit. That and also, apparently, this weekend at Wizard World Comic Con, uh, she was supposed to have her own booth there, but I mean, for obvious reasons, you know. But the people that ran the event took the poster or banner or whatever that was supposed to go above her booth. And, like, everybody that attended uh, signed it in memoriam. So it's, it's a pretty heartbreaking picture to watch, to look at. This is pretty sad. So, uh, Josh, how about you spit in the pot and uh, brighten us up? Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't have much of anything. I'm just kind of feeding off of you Do you guys. want to know the odds of Josh having a flavor? Yes. <laughs> They're not high. They're very low. <laughs> So, <laughs> I have one because I come prepared. Whether it's well, you for the used to be the one that never came up. prepared. So this is true. I'm taking oh, your I'm, spot. Th- th- this is true. You know, you can't give them too much shit. Yeah, but I, I get I to play it. your part. <laughs> I winged it. You didn't wing it. I mean, You're I just always like, uh, wing it. But guess what? Because I'm a good winger. Here we I'm go. not touching that. That came out wrong. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Microsoft drops the ball. They kill off Again. what looks to be a phenomenal game. And then Sony comes out like, God, look, the first color variation for the PlayStation is out or coming out. Well, and old, old, and it releases January 24th in Europe, February 23rd in Japan. It's going to have the 500 gig hard drive. The controller is going to match. And as always, thanks, Sony. No word on when it's coming to the U.S. Fucking. I highly doubt it'll come to the U.S. Do you know how many fucking variants of the PlayStation 3 that never made it to America? Like, it's ridiculous. But to be fair, I mean, they've had a couple of, like, special edition consoles, like the Final Fantasy XV and uh, Destiny uh, bundles. Okay. But, you know, I see why this would upset people. It's like, you know, well, I didn't like Final Fantasy. I don't want Final Fantasy 15. I don't want Destiny. I just want a new color variant, and we're not getting one. Right. I mean, I, I'm i not one for color variants. I would actually rather sticker mine. Make right. it a little bit more custom. But I can see where if I was coming into the platform, and I am relatively late, but For Honor's coming out, and it looks phenomenal, and I want to play that game, mm-hmm. so I'm going to buy a PlayStation. I'd rather have a selection, you know? Give me yeah. give me the option of the white or black. Give me the, the old model or the slim, something or another, right? Right. Especially since you you threw that PlayStation Pro, or I don't even remember what the fuck it's called. Um, I think it's called the Pro. Yes, I think so. Anyway, you shove that shit down our fucking throat, you can at least put it in white. Yeah, or some other type shit, of color variation. Gold, blue, something. I mean, shit. With the Xbox 360, it was like seemed like every other week they were coming out with a new fucking variant of it. And it's really not that fucking complicated. Make the same thing, put a different color casing. Right. On it. Yeah. It's, it's not it's, that. Complicated. It's not like you're, you know, having to put new processors or different types of processors into these fucking machines. Somebody was like, "Yo, we can, we can put a new GPU in this thing, and uh, you know, maybe a little bit more hard drive." Color it blue. <laughs> ah, that thought doesn't cross their fucking mind. They'd rather just sell you the same machine with the faster shit. Oh yeah. Anyway, so that 
I feel like Sony is dropping the ball for North America, and we have to be one of their biggest customers. I mean, I mean, fuck. next to Japan, actually. Right, right. So that upset me a little bit, but you know what made me happy? What made you happy, Jeff? <clears throat> so my favorite website to browse when I'm, you know, the library or on a bus or something. Pornhub. Pornhub. Absolutely. Pornhub compiled a list of character searches for Overwatch. Go on. Spoiler alert. It's a great game. Well, Here are I'm, the top 20. I'm going to not bore you with the hideous, fat, short, and other, um, I guess, aesthetically pleasing people. Or aesthetically, aesthetically not pleasing. Can't talk. Never good. No. And the top five is number five is Sombra with four hundred seventy four thousand three hundred and ninety searches. I would find Sombra Whittle. more attractive if she didn't have that god awful looking Skrillex haircut. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sorry. If you're I, just, I just don't find that attractive, but that's just me. Understandable. Now, obviously, for her accent. They have Widowmaker at number four with 992,994 searches. I would be afraid to have sex with Widowmaker. I, she's a Widowmaker. I don't but know. Not just because of I, her name, it, dude. It's like, it's kind of like, you know, fearing to have sex with Zarya. She'll like probably crush you with her thighs. That's a real problem, and I understand. So, number three in my personal pick, Mercy. With over 1 million views. 1,218,236 to be exact. MILF. <clears throat> Diva. <laughs> because why would you not pull up a 16-year-old girl? Well, I think she's older, but that's not... Uh, uh, I don't know, but she's okay. also like the stereotypical Twitch cam girl streamer kind of thing. But continue. That's true. 1.5 million views. And then okay. there is number one, Tracer, with a whopping 2,421,530 searches for Pornhub. You little fucking pervs. I like it. Let the hentai live on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that Tracer's number one. Not at all. Uh, she's the face of the game, all right, man. Like, all right, look. Full disclosure, like, I wasn't all up in, you know overwatch like leading up to its release and all that so i never watched any of the trailers or anything like that i just kept seeing um posters and ads on you know websites and stuff like non-video advertisements i thought tracer was a guy at first oh that's about right that is about right i'm like i said i, I never heard her voice or anything like that but, yeah, I thought she was totally a guy. And then, like, everybody got, like, all, oh, it's, 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 uh, what is it, sexist that she's showing her ass? Oh, my God. Or it's demoralizing to women that she's showing her ass so much in the skimpy, or the fucking tights that she's wearing. Yep. It's like, okay. Uh I don't get into the petty arguments, man. If, if you want to show your butt, show it. I don't care who or what you are. I do find Just don't it, show it to me. I do show find it, it very yeah. funny that on the disc for Overwatch, they have her in that same pose that was causing so much controversy, and where her butt should be is where the whole of the disc is. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. That's uh, it's a, just a good touch. Blizzard, you Classy. know how to get back at fucking haters. Good for you. Really good touch. Huh? That's that's, uh, that's classy. I, I appreciate that. approve. Yeah, it's all drink to that. Uh, so, with that being said, oh, also, it's uh, oh. I think I might have asked you this before, Jeff, but I'm not really sure. Oh. What are your thoughts? This wasn't in the show notes. I know this wasn't in the show notes, <laughs> but I've been asking everybody that plays Overwatch, and, I mean, the general consensus is they don't care or they find it hot. Me, personally, I find it very hot. 
Tracer is confirmed to be a lesbian, and she has a girlfriend, hey. a very hot girlfriend. Yeah. Let me tell you something, son. As long as I can blink three times and shoot you and then rewind and do it again, I don't care what you do okay. behind closed doors. I mean, I, I thought you would be, like, excited for this because it's like there's new hentai well, possibilities. Well, what happened is, is Tracer was number five on the list because, I mean, she's pretty hot, right? I thought you said and then they're like, yo, one. Yeah, just listen, one. Bear, with, bear, bear with me. And then they're like, Tracer has a girlfriend. And that's where the extra million and a half viewers came in. Because uh, okay. no one. Uh, that's, uh, that actually makes sense. I'm telling you, I know these things. Because the no experts. one appreciates <laughs> no, no one appreciates a little girl on girl hentai quite like Jiffy. I'm up there with you. That, that's yeah. a fact. My, my, my girlfriend is probably going to be listening to this later and be like, oh my god, I'm dating a fucking pervert. Well, let me tell you something. Like she doesn't. You're also on, listening Nick. to perverts. Oh, she knows. I mean, like That's you true. know, it's been almost three years now. I mean, you think she would know, but you know. Exactly. She knows. It's no surprise to her. She knows. She knows. She knows. Shut, shut up. Shut knows. up. Shut. T- uh, Sorry, so. I had to. I fucking hate Drake with a burning with a burning passion, but uh, I cannot help but use that. No, you could have helped, and you should. Oh no, I don't help, sir. I, I know I work with... Okay, okay. Moving <laughs> forward. So, <laughs> speaking of Tracer and her incredible ability to make 2.5 million guys ejaculate. Oh, okay, so then, they're guys. 29. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. We were going to talk today about our greatest games of 2016 and our worst. And for me, no surprise, if you've been listening to the podcast, you can probably put this out verbatim, but it's definitely Overwatch. Overwatch is amazing. I've played other great games. Nothing took, nothing did it for me quite like Overwatch has this year, last year. Not even Battleborn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. I had to just because... My God, that, that poor game. So, Overwatch, I had competition for this. When Nick originally brought the idea to me, I was like, well, it's Overwatch easily. But then I thought, I thought back on the entire year, and I said, what game was just as fun, if not funner than Overwatch? And I actually came up with one. You were going to say w- either WWE or NBA 2K. That's completely wrong. Pokemon Go, sir. Uh, uh, is that a game? Pokemon. Thing. Yes, that was a fucking game. It was augmented reality. Yeah, but it was a game. but it's still, it had Think so it this many way. missing features and shit. Like, you know. It did. It, can you really call it, it a game? Oh, no, it was a game. It was a game. I, I it was something it to a, do. A fad. I don't know. It's still pretty popular. I mean, yeah, it's still pretty popular, but I mean, in our area, really, how many people do you see still walking around playing Pokemon? Oh, it, it died, and that's why Overwatch took it for me, but I had a lot of... When that game came out, I had a lot of fun. I actually got some fucking exercise. I went so far as, to, instead of a pub crawl, I went on a pokey crawl with yeah. a group of people I never met. That's just horrifying. I'm surprised you're still with us. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm well prepared to run. But I actually made a lot of friends is, because of that game. I did not I make did. any I, friends because of that game. I was mainly because I mean, I'm still to, like, very the antisocial. Big, I went out to like, some true. of the big places, and people just like didn't care anymore if I was just talking to each other the whole time. It, it, was, it, was, nice. it brought people together. It was great, man. I was at a park, and there's this guy that I would never regularly have conversation with, and he's like, "Hey, there's a squirtle over here," and I'm just like. Dude, where and we start talking. <laughs> that's just how it went. Man. That's how it. That's how, how it worked for a lot of people. See, I, I didn't go out so much to play Pokemon Go, but that was mainly because my girlfriend still had an ancient phone that could not run Pokemon Go. She has one now, still, but that can run. Still Pokemon to this Go, day, but, you know. Still to this day, me and my girlfriend will randomly go out and drive around in Pokemon Hunt. 
See what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying, Mr. Is That a Game? I do see what you're saying, but still. Coupled together. But not quite as great as Overwatch to me. Overwatch had great content when it released. It did. Free updates with great content. And they actually went as far as to release new game modes. Like instead of just the 6v6 when they released the 3v3, the 1v1, and the mystery duels. Right. It because my biggest gripe with it was single queue sucked. I couldn't play without my friends because you're getting on a team and everybody wants to be a fucking attacker and no one remembered how to push a payload. It was horrible. So then you get on 3v3 and it's pretty much team deathmatch and the world has changed. I mean, I would Amazing. like to see something similar to a team deathmatch style game mode but at the same time I know I would probably join in and like find nothing but McCree's or Soldier 76's I'll tell you something son you don't want to be around when it's high noon I'll tell you that oh dear god anyway. speaking of such <laughs> Overwatch just finished downloading for me nice alright so, PlayStation so I'm going after oh you have an Xbox yeah right have an Xbox. <laughs> yes he has an Xbox. So, moving on can't really say much so, I got one too that's yeah. my fave what about you guys? Well, what's your worst? Well, I think we should go around oh, okay. with uh, with all of our favorites, Best. then go around with our okay. worst. Okay, that works. <coughs> oh, also, excuse me. Should also put that. Yeah. Moving <laughs> forward. I thought it would have been Thanks, implied, Josh. but you know what? This is, this is what well, it, it wasn't. Was, but... No, it wasn't. God, I have to tell Shut you up. people everything. Fuck. Shut up. <laughs> That's all why right, you're Josh, here. So was it Call of Duty or was it Battlefield 1? It was neither, actually. I was going to put Overwatch, but I've really only played part of a game so far. You played so, against so bots. I, so it I put Yeah, I played against That's bots, so I can't really count it as playing. So, so I Titanfall go with... 2. <laughs> no, I didn't even play Titanfall 2. Um, I'm actually going to go with Division. Mm, very good choice. I thought about that game. Yeah, I just that picked game, it up uh, for Black Friday, and since then I've put 60 hours plus in. It hooked them. Yeah. It's, dude, the game was great. My problem with it was that I had a couple buddies and as soon as like I stopped playing for a day, they were nine levels over the, over me and everybody was too strong if I joined their match. Right. But it was a great game. It To this day, it's still a good game. It was a good playing. concept and... It just got a little repetitive for me. It does get kind of repetitive, but the, the new stuff that they keep putting out is actually really nice. Um, they just put out a big DLC not long ago. Yeah, the That's really survival good. mode and all that. and Survival and underground. Right. So, I mean, it added a lot, a lot more into it. I mean, I've, I'm starting to make it a rule where I don't... I, like, I don't want to purchase season passes anymore. Because, like, the last three season passes I've bought were for games that I ended up hating. Or not hating, but, like, got bored with and just didn't play anymore. And it's like, well, I wasted 30 bucks on... I wasted extra 30 bucks, you know, on the season pass. Right, right, right. So, you know. As long as I have fun with it for a little bit, I have no problem buying a season pass. Um, you know, everybody has their own thing. Yeah. So, Nick? Um, my best game for 2016, it was a toss-up. It really was. It was a toss-up between Overwatch and Doom. Doom because was a phenomenal Doom game. Doom was phenomenal. It might have lacked in the storytelling department, but my God, it made up for with the action, the blood, the gore, the violence... The multiplayer was actually very fun, which I, f I, I thought was really odd because, like, every reviewer I read uh, just crapped on the multiplayer for this game. And they were like, you know, it's it's an old school style uh, multiplayer where there's, you know, there's pickups all over the map and stuff like that. And they're like, well, players that have been playing longer than others will have an advantage. I didn't feel like that. Like, never at any point playing the multiplayer for Doom, I felt like somebody had an unfair advantage over me. Unlike right. Call of Duty where, you know, 
they unlock perks at level, you know, prestige five, level 58, that lets them be invisible for 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm obviously exaggerating, but you get the point I'm trying to get across. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid, though. I mean, I, I mean, once they get a certain gun, you have no chance. Right. And then it pretty, and then, yeah. I uh, didn't mess too much with the editor, the level editor for Doom, but yeah, it was a toss up between Doom and Overwatch because I put a lot of hours into both of them. And I both very good games. I honestly That's could not game. pick one over the other. Well, I mean, I actually, since I went with Overwatch, I actually thought to say Doom. And here's the kicker I played Doom for about three hours at a buddy of mine's house. Mm hmm. And was like this, and I have not matched that level of fun with many games this year. If matter of fact, this is definitely the best single single player game I played this year. Oh yeah, that definitely. Is definitely the best. It, so are you changing with, your answer then? Me, absolutely not. No, he's. I, you know what? I'm just gonna stick with Doom since Jeff already had Overwatch, and Doom I feel got kind of overlooked after a few months, and. I, I urge people to try it out. I mean, it's a mindless shooter. It's like Call of Duty, but, you know, not all the dude bros yelling at you to get good. <laughs> right? Get good, bitch. You know, play COD for 30 hours straight, bro. Get good. Drink Mountain Dew and Monster. Um, oh yeah, God, we're not doing this. Monster. Although, that level of caffeine is very attractive to me. I'm going to go ahead and start over here with my worst game of 2016. And to me, it wasn't the worst game I played, but it was by far the biggest disappointment. Nick, you want to say it with me here? I think we all have the same one. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. <laughs> Dude, now, mind you, I have not played since this Foundation update came. Although I do have to point out but No I Man's had... Sky is not my worst game of 2016. It was up there, but oh. there was there was another game that etched it out. So the game I found, this game did not have the worst gameplay in the world. I mean, it, 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 it crashed on me once or twice, but it didn't glitch out too much. The proced See, procedural generation I, I didn't bother me that bad. I never had problems with the... I, did, I never had any issues with No Man's Sky. It just got too fucking boring too fucking quick. Yeah, the repetitiveness was real. And because of that, it uh, there's just not much... There's just not much else to say no, about it, man. there wasn't much it was, to do. This game it would was, have honestly hey, been saved if they had co-op. Yeah, yeah. Just running around. Anything. Anything, um, yeah, but it 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 would have been so much better. But I'm not going to be the dead horse here. I'll let one of you guys go because there's not anything we can say that has not already been said about this game. This is true. I mean, we could so, talk about Josh? how you know what what's the name of the publisher of uh, No Man's Sky? Hello Games. How they yes, went sir? like completely silent on Twitter like months and months after the game released and was getting all that bad press and the owner of the company being kind of a douche but I feel like that's already been talked to death too yes. <laughs> everything dude Josh come on man give me a game and, oh, I had the same one as you did uh, oh. just yeah. No Man's Sky and I know which one Nick's is so I'm, I'm not going to be that guy and say his but uh, thank you I don't know I just uh, I didn't think there was too many bad things that came out this year that's funny because I didn't think there was that many good things that came out this year. See, we're the exact <laughs> opposite side of the totem. We miss you, Harambe. God damn it. <laughs> Don't do that. Dick's out, man. Dick's oh, out. Oh, already is. <laughs> oh, goodness. Kind of so, hard not to when you have closed one. Yeah. So, that's true. So, Nick, what's yours then, man? My worst game was Mighty Number no. 9. Oh. This game was such <laughs> a huge disappointment to me. It was an even bigger disappointment to me, not just because of the, the Kickstarter and the delays and all that other stuff and the whole cry like an anime fan on prom night. What makes it... And how happy you were. Uh, what makes it even worse is that like right before the game came out, I found this other game on Steam Early Access called 20XX. 
Play. Which is basically a better love letter to Mega Man than Mighty Number no. 9 was. It's got tight controls. You have a Mega Man style character. You have a Zero style character. It's procedurally generated like Binding of Isaac and other dungeon crawlers or roguelikes. There's daily challenges. There's weapons to unlock and all kinds of stuff. And then Mighty right. Number no. 9 comes out and oh my god. First, I couldn't even get the game to run. Like, that was the biggest problem, because I was like, you know what? I want to play this game, but I don't feel like paying 30 bucks to get it on PS4 or Xbox One. So I went the cheap route and got it on PC for 20 bucks. Couldn't even get the game to run. Had to go mess with the registration files to finally get it to run. And I was just so disappointed. The controls were awful. The level design was terrible. The voice acting, oh my god. It was just bad. I love when Nick gets on a good rant. Like, it, it, it was just so bad that, like, I felt bad for the people that backed this game on Kickstarter. There's a guy I follow on Twitter who, I don't know if he ever got his special edition, because he, like, backed so much money into the Kickstarter to get a special edition of the game and he still hasn't gotten it. Uh, you know what? Some, th some things you just got to take the L, man. Just take the L. Don't and, worry about that special edition. I mean, Don't play the game. And the wor another bad part about Mighty Number no. 9 was it made people very weary about backing Kickstarter projects, especially for games, especially because this year they had the Kickstarter for Ukulele, which is the spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. They had Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is the spiritual successor to Castlevania since hashtag fuck Konami. <laughs> um, you know, people are getting weary of backing stuff like this on Kickstarter, and Kickstarter is a good platform to get these kinds of things going, especially in an industry that's, you know, turning into, if it's not Call of Duty or Madden, or it's not part of an established franchise that we know we can half-ass and just milk it for all it's worth. It's a platform for new life into video games, and I, Mighty Number no. 9 just caused distrust. That's true, man. With all the indie games you'll run across on, like, PlayStation 4, uh, the PlayStation Store and things of the such, right? Right. They're giving... They're, you're getting your shot, and... If you don't have the money, it'd be a great place to invest in. And if I invested in Mighty Number no. Nine, dude, there'd be no way I'd put a dollar in another video game, especially anything on Kickstarter or anything titled Metal Gear after Kojima. I mean, but I, I digress. I, mean, I backed uh, the million dollars butt game on Kickstarter for Rooster Teeth, and I was not disappointed with that. I'm actually thinking about going to donate to the Kickstarter for uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night because I've seen some alpha gameplay of it and it looks fan-fucking-tastic. I'm going to have to check some of that out, man. That seems like a great place. to. Uh, it's still one of like, those you need to be the... weary of what you back on Kickstarter because you hear a lot of horror stories and Mighty Number no. 9 just did not make it any better. Especially because the creator of Mega Man himself, Keiji Inafune, was the one that started the Kickstarter. And That's amazing. he basically turned into Peter Molyneux, Molyneux, the guy who created Fable, where his mouth overloaded his ass. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, plot twist. Are y'all ready? All right. I have a plot twist. Okay. Josh, you're excluded because you didn't bring anything to the pot today. Okay. Nick. Give me, give me the best feature of the worst game you picked. The best feature of the worst game of that my, I picked. Of Mighty Number no. Nine. What's the best thing about Mighty Number no. Nine, dude? There, it doesn't there have to play wasn't. anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, probably that I was able to get my twenty dollars back on Steam to buy something else. <laughs> Like that is that was the best part. That was my best part of experiencing Mighty Number no. Nine when I checked my playtime to make sure I hadn't exceeded the two hour limit on Steam so I could get my money back. Uh oh, <laughs> oh, that was so worth it. Oh my god, that was pretty good. So, I mean, mine's pretty easy. No Man's Sky, the gameplay of it, 
for the first hour where you're like, holy oh, shit, God, check this. Yeah, the, dude, the, it, it, it you know what? Blew me away. Or the sheer size, the sheer size of this shit, dude. Where like, if you're in a spaceship and you're not holding the warp button or whatever the fuck they called it, uh-huh. they're like, yeah, travel time four days, not game days, real, real days. days. You're gonna run your system for four days before you make it there at this speed. Yeah. I thought that was pretty. That's that is amazing groundwork for an amazing game to come in the future. Yeah, that's what that is. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so, Josh, anything? Nothing? Uh, no. I <laughs> think you got anything else you want to add there? Um, hashtag fuck Konami. Hashtag fuck Konami that will be in the show description, won't it, Nick? Yes, it will. I'll put it in the tag. Hashtag ten days. So Shut up. If you <laughs> Oh my goodness. If you're not already following us on Twitter, we haven't been as active as we used to be, but as we said in the update, we're gonna make it ever, all of the flavors you hear from us, we're gonna start giving you the links, making sure you know what's going on and when it's going on. So follow us there. Also, Nick's phenomenal streams. You'll be able to see when they come out. And you got to watch these things. That dude's funny. <laughs> They're pretty good. Thank you, Saz. Even though I've like oh, completely man. been ignoring streaming for like the last two weeks. But I've also been oh. sick for like the last week or so. So, Well, when you when have them on, yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Saying syphilis is a real problem, ladies and gentlemen. Not leave it unchecked. No, sinus congestion. Same thing. And bouts of cold <laughs> weather. Like, seriously, this is the state of Louisiana. Three days ago, we were at 75. Then over the weekend, we dipped into the fucking 20s. And now oh, we're yeah. back in the goddamn nice. 70s. That's true. It's, that we participated true. in winter this year for a whopping three days. Yeah, we did. And it fucking sucked three days for me. so far. Three days so far, but we can always count on June to have that one forty degree. That one day. random day. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Hopefully it'll be my birthday. <laughs> oh God. So this has been Geek Gumbo. Hopefully Patrick will be back from Mexico. Does anybody know when the cruise ship comes back or uh, are they waiting on the wall or no? Yeah, That's no. Got him. yeah. We're gonna Child find him. him. We're gonna drag him all the way down here and he's gonna talk to you and tell you about it. Hairy penises. In Spanish. Next week. In Spanish. Hairy penises. Arriba. <laughs>